The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Quirky Dog Podcast, inspired by some of the quirkiest dogs you can ever imagine and the owners who love them. This podcast is brought to you by the quirky couple themselves, Scott and Jess Williams. Their aim is to educate and entertain. Here's Scott and Jess. Hey guys, happy Wednesday. We are coming to you live from Salem, New Hampshire, and today we are going to talk about running with dogs. That sounds like a, well, we have a lot to say about it, but very little of it will be of value. (laughs) Scott got his Hoka shoes, his old person Hoka shoes. Yeah, I got shoes, some new uh, running shoes. Yeah, so he's back to running. But first, we're going to start. And I wouldn't with... say they're old man shoes, but they, they are comfortable. They look a little old fogey to me. Let's do the quirky tip of the day. All right, so our quirky tip today is if you're going to go running, especially if you're going to be running like on the street or anything else, check the pavement temperature yourself first. And if it feels too warm for you, it 100% is too warm for your dogs because their little paws... They don't have shoes on and socks on like you. A lot of people do some barefoot running too. But if the surface feels too hot to touch. Who the hell does barefoot running? It was a big thing back in Ann Arbor. If the surface is too hot for yourself to touch, then dog's paws shouldn't be on it. All right. Tell them about running. I've never run with a dog in my whole life. So this is really you taking the lead with the podcast. more personal note here, before we get into all this running, I want to say that in another effort to um, distract myself from the conscious realization that I am one with the universe and uh-huh. one of God's children, yep. I've taken up vermicomposting this oh, week. Yes, and yes, I have a warm bin yes, at the house. He does. I got a couple pounds of red wigglers and we're we putting have, our we have kitchen uh, greens and leftovers into the bin mm-hmm. and watching the worms eat it away at it. And you know, yeah. the interesting thing, the irony here is in my effort to get away from who I am, mm-hmm. it brings me full circle when I watch the worms eating all this stuff and reminds me that this body will be eaten by worms, possibly in the future, and it's a <laughs> he, nice. He's big, like a six-year-old. The circle with his of worms. life. He's like, honey, come and look at my worms. All right, let, worms have nothing to do with running. Let's talk about running. We have a lot of clients that want to go running with their dogs. You run with dogs. Well, I hadn't. I had been running all through COVID last year. I was running pretty regularly when the gym closed. Uh, I went to running because I was in pretty good shape and I didn't want to lose it, and um, so I started running with. Several different dogs. Vital and, um, knocked him into the bushes. and then Yeah, and then I took a little topsy-turvy. <laughs> he came and, uh, home one little, day. He had like... Getting a little frustrated. I don't know if it was dirt or grass stains or whatever, but he didn't... He, I don't think uh, you've been running uh, since It's some gravel day. in the side of my face. So aside from that, <laughs> was, I was I was, was okay. It was not that bad. She like heard something and I guess tripped him up and he rolled down and she was still Well, anyway, at him. long story short, I wanted to get back into the running again. The weather is great out there. It's At this point, it's not too hot out. We're in New England. And uh, so I bought a new pair of running shoes. I got a pair of Hoka, Hoka running shoes, which are heavily cushioned on the bottom. And if you're over 40, I'd say that's probably a cutoff point where you want to start maybe being a little more conscious of your knees and your ankles and hips and the pounding on the pavement. That's a great shoe to get into. I mean, a lot of regular runners now are using them. They're just a real comfortable shoe. But especially if you're a newer runner, they have some really thick ones. So I got these shoes, and of course, given my personality, before I could get back into running, I had to get some new socks, shoes, got some new <laughs> running shorts. Be a whole wardrobe before you know, I had to join a running space. club and get <laughs> stickers and tattoos and all kinds of crap. So I got out there this morning with uh, my, my Malinois Cousteau, and we did a mile and a half. Felt really good, uh, given I haven't run for a year. And um, um, I, I'm lighter than I was. I mean, I'm uh, I'm at a pretty good weight. So you know, that's half the battle. When you're out there running with a lot of extra weight, it's even harder. But it was a nice, easy run, and it was good to get back out there again. So I thought, you know, it might be nice to talk about running with your dog. You always say running is extension of healing. It, it is, and it, 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 it can be. If your dog knows how to heal, then the act of jogging should be an extension of the healing for your own safety so that that dog isn't under your feet and possibly having you, you know, fall. Do you think that should be a precursor to anyone that runs with their dog? Not that necessarily. Have walking? No, if you have a dog that doesn't know how to heal, let's say you go for a walk and your dog is always out in front of you. I see a lot of runners that run with the dog about five to six feet out in front of them, kind of leading the way. And they seem to do really good. Um, the dog doesn't trip them up because the dog's always out in front of them. I would say if you haven't done that before, 
I wouldn't suggest doing the running where your dog's out in front of you. You can't do it really in an urban environment. You can't run through city streets with a dog six feet in front of you unless it looks like you're just this out of control person <laughs> running behind your dog. <laughs> and there's just a possibility of something going wrong. But if you're in the country setting, uh, trail running for sure, that would be a nice way of doing it. That way you can enjoy the run a little bit more. The dog's not under your feet or near your body. The dog is out in front of you five feet. And it's kind of like when you see dogs pulling a skateboarder. You know, they're out in front and it works fine. So that's not necessarily a bad way to go. So what do you do with dogs if they're running out in front and then they get excited about geese or a squirrel or a chipmunk? What, it, what happens with those kind of dogs? Well, your personal running time will improve <laughs> dramatically. And that's the good news. You may have wanted to just take a, a leisurely jog. turns into a run. No, but what I was going to say um, from you know, a productive standpoint, if we can find anything productive about this podcast, is that if you haven't run with your dog before, what I would recommend is that you don't do it on the street or sidewalk. Just go to a local park where there's a big open field and just start running around the perimeter of the field. Take a look, see that there isn't a lot of distraction. There isn't dogs and a baseball game going on, but just go to a quiet location like that. And get a feel for your dog and work out the quirks so that you feel comfortable running with your dog in a way that neither one of you is going to get hurt, you know? What about dogs that want to mark on everything and stop during the run? How do you address that? Well, when you're moving at a good clip, because there's going to be a lot less of that stuff going on because their nose isn't on the ground. So that's not really, I don't think, a big issue. I've never had go, that issue. If they go over, well, your dogs also know how to walk on a leash or pet dogs that you run with know how to walk on a leash somewhat before you run with them. So if they go to leave to go pee... You, you just keep running? I mean, obviously, you're going to potty the dog before the run. Uh, well, it's not running if you're stopping every 10 <laughs> feet and the dog is friggin' peeing on something. <laughs> That's called quick kind of walk and stop, I guess. But no, I mean, you, you, jogging is, it's not necessarily running. And I'm not a runner. I'm a jogger. And uh, I'm just plugging along. I mean, someone that walked quickly probably could just keep up with me while I'm jogging. But just get into a rhythm. And I tell people that, if you're a runner already, you're probably not going to want to take your dog because it's going to interfere with the experience that you're accustomed to. So if you're going to take your dog, you're doing it for the sake of your dog and you together because it is going to slow you down. And um, you have to I be noticed conscious that, of your dog. Yeah, I noticed that last year I took like three minutes off of a, a three-mile run just by not having the dog with me because I didn't have to think about the dog. You know, when, when traffic goes by... It's not a bad idea to move to the side of the road and stop. Keep in mind that when you're running with a dog, both of you are kind of prey for other dogs if you're running yeah. by people's yards. And uh, that's another uh, thing I would recommend, that if you go for a walk or a jog and you, there's certain houses you go by where the dogs bark every time you go by those houses, taking your dog for a run, that's probably not the best route because it's just going to turn into some kind of stressful situation with dogs lunging, you know, on invisible fences and all that kind of stuff. So I would suggest finding a route that doesn't have a lot of other dogs on it and stuff that's going to make a and problem for you. if there's only you. one house and a yard full of dogs that blows up, another way to counteract that is maybe you have just a quick area where you rest or walk or whatever during that because you're going to have less prey um, just walking slowly than running too. I mean, obviously you want to get past quickly, but be conscientious of that, that if a dog is excited and maybe gets loose and is chasing you, you running is going to enact that. So stopping and slowing the movement will help that. And it's the same thing that Scott says if a dog comes up to you when you're just walking or standing. If you body block your dog, the strange dog, and you're in between and then your dog's there, you're going to create a safety barrier there as well. Yeah, when you're running, I mean, if the dog is loose and they come up, you're going to create possibly a chasing situation where they're coming yeah. up behind you. And then that can turn into possibly a nip on your calves or on your dog's butt. And you don't want that stuff happening. And then if your dog has a lot of prey drive and vehicles are coming by, motorcycles, bicycles that tend to get your dog worked up, as they're approaching, I would just pull over to the side, stop, make your dog sit, give them a treat, reinforce that sit, wait till that, that prey op object goes by, and then start jogging again. Don't just try and power through crap that... You're getting all stressed about because then the dog knows, oh, shit, mom's getting stressed. Yeah. Dad's getting nervous. 
and then they lunge at a car tire and you're freaking out, screaming and all that stuff. You know? And if you have these issues, train them separately. You're not going to be working on them throughout a run. You're going to be working on these issues during training and then your running is going to be an extension of the training that you've done in these more sterile environments where you're actually focusing on the dog and have treats and have all these different things. One thing I wanted to talk about was um, running with young dogs. Oh, well, Because that comes up a lot. Yeah, I just uh, finished uh, training with a puppy that is just five months old. Super nice little, um, what was that? What's a breed? Brittany. A Brittany Spaniel. Really nice dog. And the woman asked me when she could start running with the dog. And I said, I wouldn't do any running with this puppy until the puppy's at least a year old. I mean, you can go out and let the dog run around in a field and throw a ball or do some fun stuff. But structured running on pavement is... It's Hard pretty on tough on the joints, yeah. especially of a dog that hasn't physically matured yet. Those growth plates are open, and um, I've heard, and it, you know, it could wind up being a, um, a hip dysplasia issue later, and I don't know how strong that is connected, running a puppy on pavement as a, you know, before it's developed, and then hip dysplasia as a mature dog, but I do know that breeders love to blame the the owner of the puppy for hip dysplasia, you know, everyone's blaming each other. But for the sake of having a healthy adult dog, don't do crap that could possibly compromise it in any way while it's going through that period of developing physically and, and emotionally. So that being said, with a young puppy, let them play on the beach in the field, throw a ball, let them, you know, they, it doesn't take much for a puppy to get that energy out. And then they're sleeping, growing, energy burst. And that's it. It's not like you don't want to take them out for a three-mile run. Yeah. And that being said, the woman of the, um, of the Brittany that asked me about this told me that she had a friend with a husky puppy that she took for a run, and the dog overheated and died from it. So that's really friggin' brutal. You have the heat issue, too. And uh, it seems like common sense, but the thing is, a lot of these young dogs have a ton of energy. Yeah. And people are thinking, I want to get this energy out of the dog so that the dog will be more comfortable or easier to live with. The problem is when they get overheated, just like children, it's not easy to rehydrate them. Adults can sweat, and that helps to keep us to moderate our temperature. We can gulp down you know, a quart of water, and it will rehydrate us fairly quickly. But with a, with a child, they can't just drink a lot of water and rehydrate. Their, their body isn't... Um, matured to that point yet and with puppies it's the same thing when and even with dogs let forget puppies but it takes time for them to rehydrate so if they get to a point where they're really dehydrated it's not just give them some water and they're all better they could need some iv fluids to to get rehydrated to get cooled down you want to be really careful about heat exhaustion which is a lot less serious than heat stroke but you're on the way yeah and as far as that goes we kind of blend it over to warm weather and young dogs but if we're just talking young dogs and the principle of running with young dogs a year to 18 months depending on the breed and if you want to get really nitpicky um you can do some x-rays and make sure those growth plates are closed yeah, okay you, i was gonna say if you have a giant breed you're looking at two and a half yeah, years it's gonna before be, you're it's out gonna there. be a little bit longer than a year all right we're gonna go to break super quick and when we get back we're gonna discuss this more and i even have a video of scott from this morning with kiss joe Does your dog lack self-control? Are you looking for some answers? Would you like your dog to be calmer? Does your dog lack confidence? Canine MindShift. Enroll in a free course today. Simply go to caninemindshift.com. That's caninemindshift.com. We're back. So um, one thing I want to talk about was gradually increasing the distance and all of these things, endurance, duration, everything else. So Scott talked about he started running again this morning, knowing my husband running now will be a thing. He'll be running daily for a few months. This is just He'll how Scott does things. and worms. <laughs> yeah. Running and worms. <laughs> he's going to be listening to worm things while he's running with the dog, all this other stuff. But if you are just starting out, granted it's a little bit cooler now, you want to go 
a reasonable distance. This morning, Scott said he did a mile and a half. His Mal and him have run that plenty of times before. If you haven't ever run with your dog before, just do a half mile. You're going to build up slowly. Don't think, okay, I'm going to go out for my five mile run and see how this goes. You're going to build up, get a rhythm with your dog and everything else. Let's watch the video from this morning. From I just want to say also on a side note that most dogs in this country are overweight. They're not in good shape. This is true. Our dogs are already in good shape. So, and they still need to build up endurance. Even though they're in shape, they're not in shape for that long distance running. So keep in mind that a heavy dog, yeah, it's you know, gonna be harder on them. they need to take some time. And, and also, I would, if you're concerned, if you're running them to get their weight off, look at how much they're eating. Cut back on the food too, to begin with. Yeah. All right. I want to show the video from Scott this morning running. It's just him beginning his run. I took the video real quick, but we can break apart kind of the ideal of how we want this to look. If you're going to kind of think of what would the ideal picture look we like. We should actually put this in fast motion so it looks like <laughs> I'm actually jogging. All right. Quiet down. It's a quick video. Boy. Hey, guys. First run of the season. Going to take it easy. Do about a mile and a half. Got the new Hoka's. Woo! You ready? Here we go. We probably should have gone to fast motion. You look a little slow there. So outside of my heavy breathing, Scott is having a dog that is already understanding loose leash walking next to him, right? So he starts in a sit, and that loose that leash for Scott will be loose the entire time. So if anything pops up or anything else, that dog is just going to be next to him. That is his ideal for running. If he decides to take a break, the dog is going to now walk next to him slowly. If he decides to sprint, the dog is going to be next to him the entire time with a loose leash. That dog is accustomed to walking on a loose leash with a pinch collar. He was wearing that on in the video. So whatever you get your good loose leash walking, your good control with could be the same equipment you run with. If you don't have good control with something, don't try a new piece of equipment just for running. A good example of that, I would say, is like if your dog is always pulling ahead and you think, oh, I'm going to put a front attached harness on him, that's probably not the best piece of equipment for running because now the dog's ahead of you, kind of pulling back. It's a lot on the shoulders. Another piece it's, of equipment. It's running on an angle. Yeah. Another piece of equipment people normally think is like, oh, I'll just put a gentle leader on him to control their head. If the dog is not familiar with that piece of equipment, that isn't your best piece of equipment for running either. I don't want the dog to think oh my gosh, here's a squirrel and go bananas. And now the gentle leader is on its neck and it has no control in that environment. So whatever equipment you use for your dog to be in a controlled way in other environments is the equipment that I would take on the walk. Yeah. And you know, I learned a lesson when I was running with her dog, who's a, a young maniac, uh, when I tripped over the dog and I'm hyper conscious of where the dog is in relation to me. And I've run with dozens of dogs, but what happened was a car was coming towards me and where I live, they, uh, the rules of the road is that you jog into traffic and you bicycle with traffic. So I'm jogging into traffic, a car is coming, and I start heading towards the shoulder, a little more, a little more. And the shoulder was a soft shoulder that kind of gradually rolled down gravel and into some weeds and whatnot. And her dog didn't want to go into the gravel. So as I'm moving over, she just cut into my legs because she was getting nervous about going off the road herself. And that's what caused it. So it was my fault, of course. But that's why I say if a car is coming, just stop, make your dog sit, wait for the car to go by, and then go. Because if you have a dog, again, that has some of that prey drive too, that all of a sudden is interested in the vehicle or interested in the motorcycle, that could disrupt the uh, run in a big way. <laughs> That's yeah. true. And yeah. at that point, when Scott was running frequently during COVID, I wasn't quite sure um, like how much was enough or anything else. So I actually wrote Bobby. Uh, she's been on the podcast. She's a big fitness person, Bobby Lyons. And she said the rule of thumb for an adult dog that's of a healthy weight, like Scott mentioned, and everything else would be maximum of like three half an hour sessions on the pavement per week. And you were doing probably three to five miles at that point. You guys were running a lot, but he would, yeah. you know, get whatever amount done within a half an hour. So be mindful of that too. And running on the street is much different than like Scott talked about trail running, or even some people like to run on the beach in the sand, whatever that surface is, it affects the dogs differently, just like it affects you differently. And they don't have cushy hokas on underneath them to help their joints. So be conscientious. If you're a sidewalk runner or a street runner, you're limiting that amount of time of the pounding because no matter how old the dog is, it is, can be a lot on their joints. Yeah. And you know, that being said, if you break a dog in the right way and take your time, they can actually get some great endurance on them. And, um, 
and I have a client that is a runner and she runs with her dog like almost every morning, certainly five days a week. And she does 10, 12 miles with this dog every morning. And when I first heard that, I thought, shit, that's kind of a lot of miles. You think, is your dog okay? The dog's totally fine. I mean, they, the dog gets back from a 10. I've done a class with her, you know, two hours after a 10 mile run that she did. The dog's totally normal, totally recovered. So that's, a, but she's a runner and she broke that dog in over time. If you take a dog out and do three to five miles that has not run before, you could really put that dog's health in jeopardy. I would just yeah. be concerned about it. You're just going to build up slow and you're going to be mindful. You can t- keep a little running journal. She also had a border else. collie. Yeah. I mean, it was a, a very, you know, Ready to light, light dog with high energy that, you know, and the lighter frame dogs, it's easier on the, all their joints because they're just a lighter frame dog than the more stocky, you know, bull, bull breeds or yeah. a little heavier. And you can consult your veterinarian. Um, some people have like rehab vets now. You can consult them and everything else. But the most important part of the dog's physical self, in my opinion, is even muscle mass. So what's really important is, yes, you know, obviously you don't want to see that the dog has a hitch or anything else. But if the dog is measuring <clears throat> evenly on the front end and on the rear end, that means that it's using its body somewhat, um, it's evenly distributed. So that's really important because if the muscle mass is going to be higher on one side than the other, then it's overcompensating. There could be a weakness and everything else. And that could turn into a long-term injury. So running, if you are a runner, I am not a runner. I go walking with bug with weights and I go power walking. She gets injured just walking. (laughs) That's not nice. I was breathing kind of heavy. Just, you know, we do have a client, we have a a client that is a three-legged dog that runs with her dog. Yeah, uh, also. That's, they come in all shapes and forms. But if you are a runner and you think, wow, I want to do this with my dog, Scott mentioned the weight thing. That's a huge point to start at. Having the dog of, of a healthy weight, um, d- decent muscle mass, decent exercise regime before you start is great. And then you want to look at, okay, where am I going to go? What kind of control am I going to have? All of this stuff. The way that Scott runs when he runs with pet dogs or our dogs or anything else, if he needed to make a left turn out of the blue, any dog would make a 90 degree left turn while he's running and he could just cut right into them and they'd understand to stay next to him. Unless it's her dogs and I'll, I'll fall into the bushes. <laughs> I don't know what happened there, but he was very, really You know, another thing to feathers. consider that we didn't mention is the age of the dog. I don't know if yeah, we mentioned that, no. but along with their weight and whatnot, if they're an older dog, they're going to, just like older people, you know, they... They're not going to have that youthful energy. They yeah. need a slower transition. And if you don't have great control, I know that Scott talked about early on that, you know, some dogs run five to six feet out front and that works great, especially in a low traffic area. If you're just letting your dog run as fast as they can to get energy out in, when there's no control at all in the activity, that's not necessarily the best way to approach it either. So if well, you they don't wouldn't be have, running with their dog if that well, were the case, right? <laughs> <laughs> some people think, and some people that are athletic think, oh, we're just going to go and this is going to be great. So if you absolutely have no control or you have these triggers where other dogs or small prey or bikes or something else is a problem with your dog, get some training, get some control in just a situation where you're walking, you have a loose lead, you can practice healing. If that's something your instructor teaches, hopefully who knows what dog trainers are teaching nowadays. And then like Scott says, that running is actually an extension of your healing. So that extension of having control on a leash without having to wrap it all around your hand and pull back the whole time becomes now a dog running next to you and you guys both enjoying it. Yeah, and I would start, if you haven't done it before and your dog doesn't have a lot of training, uh, start on the grass. Find a nice open field that's that's cut that you can run on because I can remember even the first time I took a dog bicycling, uh, I went to a big park in the grass because this dog was pretty intense and I just didn't want to have any problems. And I was right in trying that because... (laughs) I'm riding around. I had one of those, what do you call those thing? A springer attached to my uh, bicycle where you hook the dog onto this, this, like a U with a spring under your seat, just so it has a little bit of give back and forth when it's running. And I'm buzzing along on my bike. And there's these two guys about 25 yards ahead of me, but playing Frisbee. And the guy whips a Frisbee and my dog sees that and shoots across the front of my bike. And I went over and landed in the grass. And the two guys came running over, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, no problem. You know, I just, I, I thought something like that possibly could happen. And so, uh, you know, I, it was, nobody got hurt because I was on the grass, you know. Yeah. And it, it was a good practice. would be bad to be downtown LA for that. Yeah. So if you haven't ran with your dog, but you want to, um, 
consider some of these suggestions. A lot of people really enjoy running with dogs. A lot of people in Maine run with dogs. And Scott, he's back to running, and I'm excited about it. Your dogs are going to love it, and you're going to love it. In the new shoes. He didn't wear them. Yeah. I but, mean, some people, they, but they're go, fashionable. they walk their horses. I mean, so <laughs> do, they could jog their horse, too, it's I a, guess. It's a whole new way of living up in Maine. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Uh, we will see you next Wednesday. And in the meantime, go for a jog with your dog. Get out and get some exercise. And Enjoy the summer. Keep it quirky. <laughs> The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.